run while you can and run as fast as you can. Spirits are breaking. I'm earning peanuts. A 16 hour workday. One of the worst things about working at a big four are the people. Hello friends, today we will be talking about how come everybody's quitting the big fours. Today actually marks my third year anniversary of joining KPMG and I consider myself a one of the people who stuck around. From the original cohort that joined in 2019, only me and another person have remained. When I joined I noticed people were quitting. They were dropping like flies off of the grid and I started getting really anxious and concerned because I've myself come from a toxic work environment. So I was thinking there must be a deeper reason why all these people are quitting so quickly that I am not aware of and it must be something bad as well. But over time I've realized it's not the toxicity that drives people away but other factors that I wanted to discuss with you so that you're better equipped to make decisions and know what you're getting into if you're about to get hired at a big four. So let's get right into it. So I think the number one and most important reason this is a high turnover industry is because we are highly dependent on when our clients need their reports. They in turn are dependent on their customers. Their customers usually want their reports every fiscal year end so come autumn spirits are breaking and there are a lot of incentives to keep people around through the what is not the busy period or busy season which i am in currently as well right now and it is very busy it is really tough i may or may not have cried last week on several occasions from work stress just because there are so many reports to deliver i'm juggling currently five or six on my plate and they're all supposed to be done by end of December and there's holidays and people going on vacations so number one reason I would say is just the busy periods and the amount of work it does ease up after autumn after winter but it's still quite high okay number two reason is just the work environment and the work culture there is a specific type of person that gets hired to work at a big four and even though we're all different and we're all special snowflakes there are some traits that we share one of one of which is being a high achiever or you know a streak for perfectionism so watching people around you that you admire working really hard weekends and evenings creates this pressure for you as well to excel in large quantities so you just put this pressure on yourself nobody is really you know driving you and there's no nobody standing with a whip over your head but you yourself just want to do this watching others so it's really the culture of extreme hard work just this week i had a touch point with a manager at 9 a.m who told me he went to bed at 3 a.m because of work so that means he had a 16 hour workday. One of the best things about working at a big four is all the amazing people you get to meet internally and on the client side. You get exposed to different opinions, you hear their stories, you pick up lots of skills. But one of the worst things about working at a big four are the people because it infuses your day with unpredictability, human error. Somebody might be having a bad day not because of you, but you have to deal with their feelings about it. You have to manage people and their expectations. And there's so many different personalities that you just have to adjust yourself to, to get the work done. It can get rather overwhelming and add additional stress. Okay, number four, and that is if you are working in a big corporation, you know that there should be strict rules in place to gear all of these people and all of these projects towards a common goal and like i've described in my salary videos previously that i'll link i always get the side wrong but i'll link somewhere here if you want to address the structure of your salary you're going to have a lot of pushback because it's already well established even if you say i'm earning peanuts if those peanuts fall in the bracket that has been set out for your level, it probably won't change. Now there's also a very strict hierarchy in place that goes like this. 
and you have to listen to the person above you on the letter. I've generally been able to push back a little bit and I've seen other people challenge the instructions, but when the push comes to shove, it's the person above you who makes the final call. There is a limit to how much you can write and that often doesn't sit well with a lot of people who probably know better or think they know better, but they can't get their opinion in and that drives people away as well. Because people are quitting, it builds hysteria and also breeds discontentment. I've observed periods of time when the general feeling has been run while you can and run as fast as you can, but it ebbs and flows. During the high tide periods when people are quitting in droves, people who remain have to pick up the bits and pieces of work of those who have left. I've myself been in a situation where every single person on my engagement has quit within several weeks of time and I've been around for only a year and it was extremely difficult for me to pick up their pieces and to figure things out. I'm honestly shocked at how I managed to pull through, but I think that puts a lot of pressure on people, just the lack of resources and the lack of guidance. So if you're a junior consultant, there are not enough seniors around. If you're a senior consultant, there's not enough managers around to guide you or they don't have enough time. Doesn't often happen, but when it does, it hits hard. Okay, everyone, this is your favorite part of the video. And that is the conclusion. And the conclusion is take everything I said with a grain of salt, but don't be salty about it. Clearly, as I've mentioned, this is my third year, the big four, and I found a way to manage my time and people's expectations. And I've noticed people either stick it out for 20 plus years or they quit within the first several years. But if you are able to find your spot under the sun, it can be a great asset to your skill set and look good on your resume. So it opens quite a bit of doors for you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. As always, I have so many exciting ideas for this channel. We'll be going into a few more details about my thoughts on the daily life and my existential crisis along with my career journey. So if you're there for it, subscribe, drop a like, let me know what you would like to see and I'll see you at the next video. Bye. If I tell you